Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. I navigated through the bustling airport, feeling a mix of excitement and anxiety. My flight to London was a much needed break from my hectic schedule. After clearing security, I made my way to the gate, where a crowd of passengers was already gathered. I found my seat near the window and settled in, ready to lose myself in a book for the next few hours. Just as I was getting comfortable, I heard a familiar voice. Flynn Parker, is that really you? I looked up, my heart sinking. It was Peggy, my ex-girlfriend from middle school, the girl who had made my teenage years a complicated mess. She was standing in the aisle, her designer handbag slung over one shoulder, her eyes wide with a mix of surprise and something else I couldn't quite place. Peggy, I managed trying to sound casual. Long time no see. She flashed a smile that didn't reach her eyes. What are the odds, huh? Mind if I sit here? Without waiting for my response, she plopped down in the empty seat next to mine. I felt a twinge of annoyance but forced myself to remain polite. So, Flynn, what have you been up to? She asked, her tone dripping with feigned interest. Flying, I replied simply. I'm a pilot now. Really? A pilot? She laughed, a sound that grated on my nerves. Well, I guess you're doing okay then. I shrugged, not wanting to give her the satisfaction of knowing how much I loved my job. What about you, Patey? Oh, you know, she said, waving her hand dismissively. Married to a wonderful man. He's a big shot in finance. We live in a huge house in the Hamptons. It's everything I ever wanted. That's great, I said, genuinely hoping she would stop talking. Peggy leaned in closer, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. You know, Flynn, I always knew you'd end up doing something like this. Flying around the world, chasing dreams. But it's not very practical, is it? I clenched my jaw, trying to keep my cool. It's what I love to do, Patty. Practical or not. She smirked. Well, at least you found something to keep you busy. As the plane began to taxi, I turned my attention to the window, hoping to avoid further conversation. Patty, however seemed determined to keep talking. Do you remember middle school? She asked suddenly. We had some good times, didn't we? Some, I agreed, not wanting to delve into the past. I remember how you used to talk about flying all the time, she continued, ignoring my reluctance. You were so obsessed, I thought you'd grow out of it. Guess not, I said shortly, hoping she'd get the hint. But Peggy was on a roll, you know, Flynn, it's funny how things turn out. Here I am, married and living the high life, and you're, well, you're a pilot. Before I could respond, the flight attendant's voice crackled over the intercom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a medical emergency in the cockpit. If there is anyone on board with flying experience, please make yourself known to the cabin crew immediately. I nodded, already unbuckling my seatbelt. Stay here, I instructed, though I doubted Peggy had any intention of moving. The cabin was a mix of anxious whispers and wide-eyed stares. The flight attendant, a young woman with a name tag that read Anna, met me halfway. Are you really a pilot? Anna asked, her voice tinged with desperation. Yes, I am. Flynn Parker, commercial airline pilot, I replied, showing her my credentials. Thank God, she breathed. Follow me. We moved swiftly to the cockpit, where the sight was alarming. The captain was unconscious, and the co-pilot was struggling to keep the plane steady, his face ashen and sweat trenched. Captain's out cold, the co-pilot, whose name tag read Jim Rast. I don't know what's wrong with him, and I'm not feeling too great either. Take a deep breath, Jim, I said, taking the seat next to him. I'll take the controls. Can you manage the communications for now? Jim nodded weakly, moving aside as I slipped into the captain's chair. I quickly scanned the instrument panel and assessed our current status. The autopilot was engaged, but we were off course. London Control, this is Flight 682. We have a medical emergency. Both pilots are incapacitated. I am a certified pilot and have taken control of the aircraft. I reported over the radio, trying to keep my voice calm. Roger, Flight 682, came the response. We are clearing a path for your emergency landing. Maintain current altitude and heading for now. I turned to Anna, 
who was standing by the door, her face pale. Anna, give me a headset and keep the passengers calm. Let them know we're handling the situation. On it, she said, rushing to comply. Jim managed to relay our position and status to the control tower while I focused on stabilizing the aircraft. I could feel the eyes of the passengers on me, a mix of hope and fear. How are you holding up, Jim? I asked, glancing at him. Better now that you're here, he admitted. I think it's food poisoning. We both had the same meal. Great, I muttered. Just hang in there. Anna returned with the headset, which I quickly put on. Flight 682, you are cleared for an emergency landing at Heathrow. Begin your descent to 10,000 feet, came the instruction. Roger that, London control. Beginning descent, I responded. As I adjusted the controls, Peggy appeared at the cockpit door, her face etched with worry. Flynn, what's happening? Are we going to be okay? Peggy, go back to your seat. We have everything under control, I said firmly. But, Peggy tried to object. Now, Peggy, I snapped and Anna guided her away gently. The descent was tense, but smooth. Every slight turbulence felt magnified under the circumstances, but the plane held steady. Jim continued to assist with communications, his voice gaining strength as we approached Heathrow. Flight 682, you're clear for final approach on runway 27 letters. Emergency services are standing by, London Control announced. Copy that. London Control. Final approach on 27 letters, I confirmed. The runway lights came into view, and I focused on the landing procedures. The flaps were set, the landing gear deployed, and I adjusted our speed for a smooth touchdown. Stay with me, Jim, I said as I prepared for landing. We're almost there. The plane descended steadily, and with a gentle thud, we touched down on the runway. A wave of relief washed over me as the cabin erupted in applause. Emergency vehicles flanked us, ready to assist. Welcome to London, folks, I said over the intercom. Thank you for your patience. Please remain seated while we handle the situation. Anna, visibly relieved, patted my shoulder. You did it, Flynn? Thank you. Just doing my job, I replied, echoing my earlier sentiment. As the plane taxied to the gate, Jim leaned back, exhausted but smiling. You saved us, Flynn. I owe you one. We're a team, Jim. Get some rest, I said, patting his shoulder. Once we reached the gate, paramedics rushed on board to tend to the captain and co-pilot. I stood up, stretching my stiff muscles. Peggy's husband approached me, his expression one of immense gratitude. Mr. Parker, you were incredible, he said, shaking my hand vigorously. Thank you for saving us. Glad I could help, I said, genuinely appreciating his words. Peggy watched from a distance, her earlier arrogance replaced by a humbled expression. As I gathered my things to disembark, she approached me hesitantly. Flynn, I... I didn't know you had it in you, she admitted. People change, Peggy, I said, slinging my bag over my shoulder. Take care. As I walked through the airport terminal, the events of the flight began to fade into the background. The adrenaline rush of landing the plane was giving way to a flood of memories. Memories that had shaped the man I had become. I found a quiet corner in the terminal and sat down, taking a moment to reflect. My mind wandered back to my childhood, the start of my passion for aviation. I was five years old when I saw my first airplane up close. It was a family vacation, and we visited an air show. The moment I saw the massive metal bird lift off the ground, I was captivated. I remember tugging on my father's sleeve, my eyes wide with wonder. Dad, I want to fly one of those someday, I declared. He chuckled, ruffling my hair. Well, Flynn, you'll have to work hard for that. Pilots have to study a lot. I will, I promised, staring at the sky as the plane disappeared into the clouds. From that day on, I immersed myself in everything aviation related. My room was filled with model airplanes, posters, and books about flying. Every weekend, my parents would take me to the local airport to watch planes take off and land. My father, always supportive, encouraged my interest. You've got the passion, Flynn, he said one day as we stood by the runway fence. Keep at it and you'll make it. His words became my mantra. I excelled in school, particularly in subjects like math and science, knowing that they were crucial for a future pilot. 
My teachers often praised my dedication, noting my unwavering focus on my dream. In middle school, I met Peggy. She was the most popular girl in our grade, beautiful, confident, and seemingly out of my league. To my surprise, she showed interest in me. One day after school, she approached me with a shy smile. Hey Flynn, she said, I've been watching you in class. You're really smart. Thanks, Peggy, I replied, caught off guard. You're pretty smart too. She laughed. Not as smart as you. Do you want to hang out sometime? We started dating, and for a while it felt like a dream. But soon, her demands began. Peggy wanted my attention constantly, insisting that I spend less time on my studies and more time with her. She became possessive, often throwing tantrums if I talked to other girls or even spent too much time with my friends. Why do you always have to study? She complained one afternoon. You should be spending more time with me. I have to keep my grades up, I explained patiently. If I want to be a pilot, I need to focus. She rolled her eyes. Flying, flying, flying. It's all you ever talk about. What about us? Despite the strain, I tried to balance my relationship with Peggy and my dedication to my dream. But then, tragedy struck. My father died in a car accident, a sudden and devastating loss. He had been my biggest supporter, my role model, and his death left a void in my life. My mother, overwhelmed with grief, had to find work to support us. I took on more responsibilities at home, helping with my younger siblings and managing household chores. My time for studying and training was cut short, but I refused to let go of my dream. One evening, Petty came over while I was struggling to help my brother with his homework. She looked around at the cluttered house, her expression one of disdain. Why haven't you been calling me? She demanded. I'm sorry, Peggy, I said exhausted. I've been really busy with everything. So what if your mom's working? She can handle it. You need to spend more time with me, she insisted. I stared at her, unable to believe her selfishness. Peggy, my family needs me right now. I can't just ignore that. She huffed, crossing her arms. If you can't make time for me, maybe we shouldn't be together. That was the breaking point. I realized then that Peggy would never understand or support my dreams. We broke up shortly after, and while it hurt, it was also a relief. With Peggy out of the picture, I doubled down on my studies and physical training. I joined a local aviation club, where I met mentors who guided me and helped refine my skills. My mother, seeing my determination, did everything she could to support me, despite our strained circumstances. Your father would be so proud of you, she said one night as we sat at the kitchen table, her eyes filled with tears. Keep going, Flynn. Don't let anything stop you. Years passed, and I graduated at the top of my class. I earned a scholarship to a prestigious aviation academy, where I excelled in both academics and flight training. My first solo flight was a mix of exhilaration and terror, but as I soared above the clouds, I knew I was exactly where I was meant to be. I worked my way up through the ranks, flying for regional airlines before landing a job with a major carrier. Each step was a testament to my hard work and dedication, and every flight was a reminder of my father's belief in me. As I sat in the terminal, lost in these memories, my phone buzzed. It was a text from my mother. Just heard about the emergency landing. Are you okay? So proud of you? I smiled, typing back a quick reply. I'm fine, Mom. Thanks for always believing in me. Standing up, I grabbed my bag and headed towards the exit. London awaited, and with it, new challenges and opportunities. The past had shaped me, but it was the future that I was eager to embrace. With the plane safely on the ground, the cabin filled with a collective sigh of relief. Passengers unbuckled their seatbelts, exchanging nervous smiles and words of gratitude. The gravity of what had just occurred was sinking in, but for me, there was no time to rest yet. Emergency personnel rushed aboard, tending to the incapacitated captain and the unwell co-pilot, Jim. I stayed in the cockpit, ensuring everything was shut down correctly and providing information to the medics. The door opened again and Anna reappeared, her face a mix of relief and exhaustion. Flynn, the paramedics are taking over. They want to talk to you about what happened, she said. I nodded, following her out of the cockpit. As I stepped into the main cabin, applause erupted from the passengers. It was overwhelming, but I managed a humble smile and a nod in acknowledgement. 
Peggy's husband, Mike, pushed his way through the crowd, his face glowing with gratitude. Flynn, you saved all of us. I can't thank you enough, he said, shaking my hand vigorously. It was my duty, I replied, trying to deflect the praise. I'm just glad everyone's safe. Anna led me to where a couple of paramedics were waiting. Mr. Parker, we need to take a statement from you, one of them said, pulling out a notepad. I recounted the events, the emergency call, taking over the controls and coordinating with the control tower. They listened intently, jotting down notes. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Your quick thinking and expertise undoubtedly saved many lives today, the paramedics said when I finished. As they moved on to interview Jim, I felt a tap on my shoulder. It was Peggy, her expression a mixture of shock and something that might have been respect. Flynn, she began hesitantly. I, I don't know what to say. You were incredible up there. Thanks, Peggy, I said, my voice calm but distant. I did what I had to do. She looked like she wanted to say more but was interrupted by Mike, who wrapped his arm around her shoulders. Let's get Flynn some space. He's had a long day. Peggy nodded, allowing herself to be led away, glancing back at me one last time. After ensuring all procedures were followed, I disembarked from the plane. Heathrow's terminal was bustling, yet I felt a surreal calmness amidst the chaos. I walked towards the exit, ready to put this dramatic chapter behind me. As I reached the arrivals hall, I saw a familiar face. One of my old flight instructors, Captain Anderson, stood there with a broad grin. Flynn Parker, I heard what happened. Hell of a job, son. Captain Anderson, I exclaimed, genuinely pleased to see him. What are you doing here? I was on my way to a meeting when I got wind of an emergency landing. Figured I'd stick around to see who the hero was. Looks like my best student didn't disappoint. We sat down at a nearby cafe, catching up on old times. Captain Anderson had always been a tough but fair mentor, pushing me to my limits and ensuring I never lost sight of my goals. You've come a long way, Flynn, he said, taking a sip of his coffee. I remember when you were just a kid dreaming about flying. Today, you proved that dreams can become reality with hard work and dedication. I couldn't have done it without the training and support from people like you, I replied sincerely. Today was intense, but it reaffirmed why I love what I do. As we talked, my phone buzzed with messages from colleagues and friends who had heard about the emergency landing. Their words of encouragement and congratulations felt like a warm embrace, solidifying my resolve to continue striving for excellence in my career. Captain Anderson leaned back, studying me with a thoughtful expression. What's next for you, Flynn? Any new aspirations? I'm here in London for a bit of a break and to explore new opportunities, I said. After today, I'm more motivated than ever to take on new challenges. Who knows what the future holds? He nodded approvingly. Keep that spirit, Flynn. The sky's the limit for you. As we parted ways, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. Today's success was a milestone, but it was just one of many in my journey. I left the airport with a clear mind, ready to embrace whatever came next. Outside, the city of London beckoned, Filled with opportunities and adventures waiting to be explored, I hailed a cab, eager to start this new chapter with the same passion and determination that had brought me this far. A few months after the dramatic flight, I found myself back in the routine of my life, flying regularly and enjoying the occasional layover in various cities. The incident had garnered a lot of attention, and while I appreciated the recognition, I was happy to return to some semblance of normalcy. However, Peggy's life was taking a different turn, and the events that unfolded were both shocking and somewhat predictable. I hadn't thought much about Peggy after the flight. It was clear that our paths were diverging sharply. But one afternoon, as I relaxed in a cafe during a layover in Paris, my phone buzzed with a message from an old school friend, Lisa. Flynn, have you heard about Peggy? You might want to check out the latest gossip, the message read, followed by a link to a social media post. Curiosity peaked, I clicked on the link. It led to a post detailing a scandal involving Peggy and her husband, Mike. The post was filled with speculation and comments from people who seemed to know her story intimately. Apparently, things had spiraled out of control. The day after the emergency landing, Peggy and Mike's life seemed to return to normal, but beneath the surface, 
Cracks were beginning to show. Mike, inspired by our conversation and my story, started to see Peggy in a new light. He began to question the superficiality of their relationship. One evening, as Peggy and Mike sat in their luxurious living room, the tension was palpable. Peggy, can we talk? Mike asked, his tone serious. Peggy, flipping through a fashion magazine, looked up, slightly annoyed. What is it, Mike? I've been thinking a lot since the flight. About us. About our relationship. Do you even love me, Peggy? Or is it just about the money and the lifestyle? Peggy's face hardened. What kind of question is that? Of course I love you. Why else would I be here? Maybe because of the money? Mike suggested, his voice tinged with frustration. I've noticed how you've been spending our savings without even consulting me. And those lavish trips and shopping sprees. Peggy's eyes narrowed. I knew it. You're just like all the rest. You think I'm some gold digger? I deserve everything I get, Mike. I've worked hard to look this good and be this perfect for you. Mike shook his head, his disappointment evident. This isn't what I wanted in a marriage, Peggy. I wanted a partner, someone who genuinely cared about me, not just the wealth. The argument escalated, voices rising and tempers flaring. That night, Mike slept in the guest room and Peggy felt the first tremors of her world beginning to collapse. Over the next few weeks, Mike became more distant. He hired a private investigator, uncovering more about Peggy's past, including her manipulative behavior and her previous relationship with me. The final straw came when he discovered that Peggy had been siphoning off money into a secret account. Peggy, I can't do this anymore, Mike said one morning, confronting her with the evidence. I want a divorce. Peggy was stunned. You can't be serious. You're going to throw everything away over some money? This isn't just about the money, Peggy. It's about trust. It's about love. And I don't think we have that anymore. The divorce proceedings were swift. Peggy, who had always been accustomed to a life of luxury, found herself cut off from Mike's wealth. The court awarded her a modest settlement, far from the lavish lifestyle she was used to. Peggy moved back to her hometown, a small town where everyone knew everyone else's business. She moved in with her parents, who were shocked to see their once glamorous daughter return home in such circumstances. Peggy, what happened? Her mother asked, concerned. It's all Mike's fault, Peggy replied bitterly. He couldn't handle a strong woman. Her parents, while supportive, couldn't ignore the reality. Peggy had to adjust to a simpler life. She struggled to find a job, her extravagant taste, and lack of practical skills working against her. The town's gossip mill worked overtime and Peggy soon became the subject of whispered conversations and pitying looks. One day, while at the local grocery store, she ran into Lisa, the same friend who had messaged me. Lisa had always been blunt and didn't shy away now. Peggy, I heard about what happened. Tough break, she said, her tone more curious than sympathetic. Peggy forced a smile. Yeah, well, Mike was an ass. I'm better off without him. Lisa raised an eyebrow. Are you, though? You know, Flynn turned out pretty well. Maybe you underestimated him. Peggy's face flushed with anger and embarrassment. Flynn? Don't even mention him. He's the past. Funny how the past has a way of catching up, isn't it? Lisa remarked before walking away. In the quiet of her parents' home, Peggy had plenty of time to reflect. The bitterness and regret gnawed at her. She realized too late that her actions had driven away the very thing she had truly wanted, love, respect, and a partner who cared for her beyond material wealth. Months turned into a year, and Peggy's situation didn't improve. She was forced to take a job as a cashier at a local store, a far cry from her glamorous days. The reality of her situation settled in, and with it, a sense of humility she had never known. One evening, as she sat alone in her small bedroom, Peggy picked up her phone and hesitated. She typed a message to me, her fingers trembling. Flynn, I'm sorry for everything. I hope you're well. Peggy. I read the message, feeling a mix of emotions. I typed back a simple reply. Thanks, Peggy. Take care. As I sent the message, I realized how far we both had come. Peggy was facing the consequences of her choices while I was continuing to pursue my dreams, undeterred. Our paths had crossed once more, but this time it was clear that we were heading in entirely different directions. 
After the turbulence of the in-flight emergency and the subsequent whirlwind of media attention, my career as a pilot took a significant turn. I was inundated with messages from airlines, aviation companies, and even aerospace firms, all expressing interest in my skills and resilience. My newfound recognition opened doors I had only dreamed of. One particularly exciting opportunity came from Horizon Airlines, a prestigious international airline known for its cutting-edge technology and excellent pilot training programs. They reached out to me with an enticing offer. I found myself sitting in the sleek, modern office of Horizon Airlines headquarters, the skyline of the city visible through the large windows. Across from me sat Laura Mitchell, the head of their pilot recruitment division. Flynn, we were incredibly impressed by your handling of the in-flight emergency. Your composure under pressure and your dedication to aviation are exactly what we value at Horizon. Laura said, her eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. Thank you, Laura. It was a challenging situation, but I'm glad everything turned out well, I replied, trying to remain humble despite the praise. Laura smiled. We'd like to offer you a position as a senior pilot with us. It comes with a substantial increase in salary, plus the opportunity to fly some of the newest aircraft in the industry. We also have a leadership training program that could set you on a path to becoming a flight operations manager in the future. The offer was beyond my wildest dreams. That sounds amazing, Laura. I've always wanted to fly for Horizon. Your fleet and training programs are top match. Laura leaned forward, her expression serious. We believe you'll be a great fit here, Flynn. Your background, your experience, and the way you handled that crisis all point to someone who's not just a good pilot, but a great leader. So what do you say? I took a deep breath, my mind racing the possibilities. I'm in. I'd love to join Horizon. My first flight with Horizon Airlines was a transatlantic route from New York to London. The aircraft was a state-of-the-art Boeing 787 Dreamliner, equipped with the latest in aviation technology. As I stepped into the cockpit, I felt a surge of excitement and pride. Welcome aboard, Captain Flynn, said my co-pilot, Sarah, a seasoned pilot with a reputation for excellence. I've heard a lot about you. It's an honor to fly with you. The honor is mine, Sarah. Let's make this a great flight, I responded, shaking her hand firmly. The flight went smoothly, with the Dreamliner handling like a dream. As we approached London, Sarah and I chatted about our experiences and shared stories from our careers. Flynn, what's the most challenging flight you've ever had? Sarah asked as we began our descent. Definitely the emergency landing a few months ago. The captain and co-pilot were incapacitated, and I had to take over. It was a test of everything I'd learned, I said, recounting the event with a mix of pride and humility. That's incredible. Not many pilots could handle that kind of pressure, Sarah said, clearly impressed. Landing the Dreamliner at Heathrow was a smooth and seamless process. As we taxied to the gate, I couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. The passengers disembarked with smiles and gratitude, and I knew I had made the right decision joining Horizon. After a few months with Horizon, my hard work and dedication caught the attention of the upper management. I was invited to attend a special leadership training program designed to prepare pilots for higher management roles within the company. The training program was intense but rewarding. It involved everything from advanced flight simulations to leadership workshops. One of the most challenging exercises was a simulated crisis management scenario where we had to handle multiple in-flight emergencies simultaneously. During one of the sessions, I found myself working alongside Maria, a fellow pilot with aspirations similar to mine. Flynn, how do you stay so calm under pressure? Maria asked as we reviewed our performance in the simulation. I think it comes down to preparation and focus, I replied. Knowing your aircraft inside and out, and trusting your training. And of course, staying adaptable. Maria nodded thoughtfully. I admire that. I've been trying to adopt a similar mindset. It's inspiring to see how far you've come. Thanks, Maria. We all have our strengths. I've seen you handle some pretty tough situations yourself, I said, offering encouragement. As the months passed, my role at Horizon expanded. I was not only flying international routes, but also mentoring new pilots and contributing to training programs. One day, Laura called me into her office for a discussion that would further shape my career. 
Flynn, we've been incredibly impressed with your performance, Laura began, her tone indicating something significant. We'd like to promote you to the position of flight operations manager. You'll be overseeing the team of pilots and coordinating our international routes. The offer was a culmination of all my hard work and dedication. I'm honored, Laura. I'd be thrilled to take on the role. Taking on the new responsibilities was both challenging and exhilarating. I coordinated flight schedules, worked on improving pilot training programs, and ensured that Horizon maintained its high standards of safety and service. It was a role that demanded both leadership and a deep understanding of aviation. One evening, as I racked up a long day of meetings and planning, I received a call from Sarah. Flynn, congratulations on the promotion, she said warmly. You deserve it. Thanks, Sarah. It's been a wild journey, but I'm excited about what's next, I replied, feeling a sense of fulfillment. As I hung up the phone, I reflected on how far I had come. From the unexpected reunion with Peggy to the emergency that showcased my skills, to the new opportunities that had opened up, my journey was a testament to resilience and dedication. The news about Peggy's impending divorce reached me through the newspapers and the internet, igniting a flurry of speculation and gossip. It was a typical morning at Horizon Airlines headquarters when Laura, my colleague, burst into my office with a look of urgency on her face. Flynn, have you heard? She exclaimed, waving her phone. Peggy's husband just filed for divorce. It's all over the news. Surprised by the sudden turn of events, I took the phone from Laura and read the headline, feeling a mix of shock and curiosity. Peggy, my ex-girlfriend from the fateful flight to London, was once again making headlines, but this time for very different reasons. As the days passed, more details emerged about Peggy's situation. It turned out that her husband had discovered her extravagant spending habits and secret debts. Their marriage, built on appearances and wealth, crumbled under the weight of deceit. Peggy was forced to return to her hometown, tail between her legs, to live with her parents. The once proud socialite now faced the harsh reality of financial difficulties and the consequences of her actions. I couldn't help but reflect on the contrast between our paths. While Peggy had chased after wealth and status, I had focused on my passion for aviation and building a meaningful career. Our choices had led us down very different roads and now Peggy was facing the consequences of her misguided priorities. As I looked out the window of my office at the bustling airport below, I felt a sense of gratitude for the opportunities that had come my way. The future was bright, not just for me, but for everyone who chose to pursue their dreams with integrity and determination.